Welcome fellow YouTubers, this is Oilfield Disciple, and those who have ears to hear and eyes to see, this is April 23rd, 2019, we are cruising with Jesus, I got a message that I hope will bless you, encourage you, and probably frustrate the hell out of you, um, but it's good, it's good to be frustrated, you can go look it up on your own, you can go look it up and see what I'm saying, it's not false, um, I'm going to make one more video on on these holidays and then I'm done with it. I'm not gonna make no more. Um, I think we beat on this horse enough. You're either gonna get it or you're not. Um, but I have one more thing that God has put down on me um, that may help you understand um, where I'm coming from when I say that these, these holidays that we're celebrating that are contrary to God and contrary to God's word are wicked and we need to have nothing to do with them. And God has given me a good analogy for that. And I got Mama Bear over here, and, and she doesn't know anything about this video or the, the analogy that I'm going to use. So when I ask her, it's going to come off the top of her head. It's not rehearsed. Um, so on that, I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm on days off, but I had to come out and check a lease anyway. And so since I was out here, I make a video. We're going to flip the camera around. You're going to see what I see, and we're going to talk about this. May you be blessed, be encouraged, and be frustrated. All right, so we got holidays, which are a counterfeit of God's holy days. Kind of sounds similar just in the title, holiday, holy day. Um, Easter, been asked several times, you're a Christian, why don't you celebrate Easter and Christmas? Well, first of all, I'm not a Christian. Um, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Second of all, um, we have taken a wicked holiday and attached Jesus' name to it and called it good. That's not going to work. Now here's the analogy I have for that. Mama Bear, I don't like the date of our anniversary. I had a girlfriend one time and, and her birthday was on, on the 5th of June. I like that holiday better. We're going to start celebrating our anniversary on that date. Is that alright with you? Absolutely not. Why not? It's just a day. I mean, it's what it means to us, right? I mean, it's an anniversary. We'll, we'll go out for dinner. We'll go do our thing. And, you know, it's just a day. What's it matter? But it's not our day. It, it, it would be... It, it wouldn't be our day. It, it would be... A, it would be a day, but it wouldn't be our day. It would, it would be... It would be... Well, it'd be kind of painful that I would pick that day. <laughs> That you would be picking a day for somebody else and not a day for me. But I mean, for I, us. But I'm attaching you to that day, and I and I'm calling it good. Yeah, no, no, you're calling it good for you. Oh, for me, right? Yeah, yeah, for you. Okay. Well, what if we, what if the table was reversed and you wanted to change the day? Then I'm making it painful for you. Uh, and I'm not gonna put up with it, am I? No. Nor would I. Yeah, I, I am the, the leader of our home. Right. Okay. We have a date that, that God ordained us. On. We're going to follow that date. And we're going to follow the, the the ways of that date. Correct? Correct. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what we've done with Easter and Christmas and all this other. We've done that exact same thing. I don't like your day, God. I don't like what you set out. I'm going to do it my way. Do we remember reading in Exodus, Aaron and the golden calf? Now, many wicked deceiving pastors will have all these great sermons about that one, but the bottom line is um, they were dependent on Moses to tell them what to do. Moses took a little time up on the mountain, and so they got antsy and they started getting scared. And so they did what they, the only thing they knew to do was create something that they could get closer to God with. And so they created a golden calf to worship God Almighty, the Most High Elohim. They weren't doing it to be wicked, and they weren't doing it to um, disobey God. They were doing it because their heart thought it was right. Well, we know Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us that our heart is deceitfully wicked. Above all, who shall know it? Well, when we follow our heart, we're going to go wrong every single time. Bet that. That's where we're at with these holidays. That's why I'm so against them. We are basically slapping God in the face and saying, I don't like your days, God. I don't like your way. 
we're going to do it my way. We're just going to attach your name to it, and you're going to like it, God, because we're men, and this is all about us. It's all about my family and the traditions that we've had for the last five generations, and we hunt Easter eggs, and we don't really care what it really was started out, but this is what it means to me. Horseshit. Um, what it means to you is you have a wicked, deceitful heart, and you're disobeying God. Plain and simple. Um, so, it's a repentance game now. Repent. I didn't know what we were doing when we started doing Passover. I don't have nobody above me to teach me these things. Uh, I have a great pastor on YouTube, Pastor Dow, Pastor Joe Fox that I follow on YouTube that have um, kind of led me and guide me through their videos and, and showed me the scriptures that I need to get straight on and that has led me into the truth that I know by me reading the scriptures myself. Um, but as far as a physical, tangible leader um, above me to teach me these things, I don't have it. So I'm kind of like stepping out on my own going, is this really what I'm supposed to do? Well, that's what the book says, so that's what we're going to do. And we enjoy doing Passover and right now in the middle of Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, I know that that's what God called us to do. Um, so we can either get in line with the truth or we can rebel <coughs> against the truth. Um, I'd suggest you go read John chapter 16 and John chapter 17 because um, Jesus lays it out to a pretty pretty clear um, of who's his and who he's praying to or who he's praying for when he's praying to the Father in chapter 16. Um, pretty insightful stuff there in chapter 16, 17 and, and John in the book of John. Um, so, Mama Bear, you got anything you want to add before I close this out? really digging in the word and you really start reading the word you really start um, learning that the word is not really what you've been taught and um, come out of her my people the Holy Spirit really starts teaching you what the word is really saying and then you start really getting convicted that you really got to start doing things different. Well, it don't even really that you got to start doing things different. You just really start doing things different. Yeah, it just and starts falling off of you. We're kind of like three years into this. And in the last week, I've really seen, seen that we've become set apart cut out so far. and I've never like for the first time I truly have felt uncomfortable set apart like like maybe how they might have felt back in the day and it was so it was so um, heartbreaking because not for me because I know where I'm going. Like, but for the ones who think that they're gonna get to go into the bride's chambers, but who are gonna be so far away. Ooh. She's preaching another message. And it broke my heart. Because yeah, this week I was the outcast, but when we get to glory, they're gonna be the outcast and they didn't want nothing to do with me this week. That's and right. it broke my heart. That's all right. When Jesus said that they will persecute so, you, believe you me, they're persecuting uh, Jesus first. If you ain't getting yeah. persecuted, you might want to check your check your drawers and see what's happening because if everybody likes it, that ain't what Jesus the said. Bible says if if <laughs> the Bible says if if you're of the world you're not of him. And if you love the world, you don't love him. And, um, and it goes the other way around too. If, if the world loves you, you may not be of him, but if the world hates you to remember that they hated him first. And like I said this week, may, I, 
I think maybe I felt maybe just a piece of what they may have felt back then. But like I said, my heart wasn't broke because, you know, because I was the outcast. But like I said, my heart, my heart was broke because, because one of these days, they're gonna be the ones that say, but master, you know, master, I, I did all this for you. And they're gonna hear depart from me for, for I never knew you. And then they're gonna see me get to go in and they're gonna be like, but she was the one we didn't want nothing to, to do with. And she was a peculiar baby. <laughs> like I said, this is the first time I have felt like I felt set apart, but this is the first time I have I physically seen that I was set apart. And um, so don't be discouraged. Read your word. Get into the word. Oh my God. We're missing out on so many blessings. I wished I knew them what I knew now. Um, I can't I can't wait to continue to learn. He teaches me daily. Um, just get in your word. Don't lose hope and faith. And uh, shalom, be blessed. God, get that picture off of this ugliness. Well, it's probably facing forward. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Get um, it off of this ugliness. All right, well, let's look out there. Um, there you go. Let me close this up here because I got to get some work done. I get to see my baby girl. Um, He's fixing to be 18. I know that y'all. I know that some of this is like strange when you first hear this, and probably um, you think, "Who is this heretic speaking this stuff?" Well, when you go look at the the word that I'm telling you, um, you'll you'll begin to see the transformation in what Jesus said. You know, like I said yesterday, if the word contradicts itself in the New Testament, the Old Testament, and you think that it's contradictory, or you think Paul's saying something opposite of what God said in the Old Testament. Um, then that makes Paul a liar, it makes God a liar, or we're not reading the scriptures right, and we need to go check it. Um, Romans 14, I can tell you right now, it ain't got nothing to do with not eating um, pork, being able to eat pork. It has to do with um, uh, them fasting, and how different, different people fasted on different days, and different people fasted different ways. That's what Paul was talking about in Romans 14. Um, second Colossians chapter 16 or verse 16 um, Paul's telling them look it's been like 40 years since Jesus left us he was the once and for all sacrifice stop sacrificing the animals on the Passover and eating this go down where it says taste not touch not want not um, he's telling them to quit doing that but don't let people condemn you because you're not partaking of of the sacrifice all right go read that read it in context read the whole chapter read the whole the whole letter that Paul writes and it will be eye-opening just in the English now then you go start looking at some of those words in the Greek and the Hebrew or in the Hebrew the Greek for the New Testament um, and you start looking those words up man I'm gonna tell you what you can be like whoa that ain't what the English word means English language has got things all jacked up Anybody knows that as well as, as the next guy. You know, when when we made the word bad become something that is good, um, that is confusing to people who are trying to learn the English language. Um, they don't have a clue what they're doing. It depends on what reference, what context we say bad, whether it's good or bad. Well, that's just one reference word of the English language um, that we've, do, we've done that with. So when we read the scriptures in the English, Thinking about it from an English uh, Western um, culture standpoint, we missed the point. It was written from an Eastern culture of a people that operated totally different than we do here in the United States. And um, when we read it and understand it from their point of view, because we've went and done our research on the history and how they operated, then the scriptures come to life for us. Then we start understanding um, what Jesus meant, what Paul meant, what Peter meant. Um, what God says in the New Testament and the Old Testament and it doesn't contradict itself. The Old Testament is 4,000 years of Jewish um, Hebrew history. The New Testament is 60 to 70 years. 80 years, 90 years tops of history. So that 
it's not going to override the 4,000 years prior to that. Bet that. When Jesus says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, um, I'm the beginning and the end, if he changes, then we have a God that is, is, is jacked up. If God changed 2,000 years ago, changed all his plan, changed all his rules, just to benefit Christians, um, we've got a God I don't want to serve because he's bipolar um, and he lies in his word, if that's the case. The problem is that's not the case. The case is, is we, in our fleshful nature, want to make it about that. So I'm... Like I said, this is going to be the last video I'll make on this. We're going to do some other things uh, going forward um, and, and talk some more truths. We're going to get into the deep of the truth and, you know, and just, just frustrate people to go look things up for themselves. I've been amazed since I've just been reading the scriptures daily how it's transformed my life in the last five years. Um, and really in the last three years. It took, two, took me two years to really start seeing truths that wasn't lining up with what I was being told. It took me another year, year and a half to go, okay, I think we need to start doing something about this. And my procrastinating, rebellious ways, we went another six months to a year. Um, so I'm looking at four years that I really didn't do much, but this last year, we've been, we've been changing and rearranging our life, and it is making a difference. Um, not physically, spiritually. Y'all be blessed, be encouraged, um, and always be frustrated. Y'all be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, go read some more today. Read Psalms 91 three times a day and see what that does for you. Be blessed. And this is Oilfield Disciple. We'll catch you on the next ride.